Good morning. My name is Susan Nisley, and I work at the Nebraska Library Commission. And today's online session is titled "Downloading Overdrive Ebooks and Audiobooks for Your Reading Listening Pleasure." Um, I did another online training session on Overdrive two weeks ago, and during that session, uh, what we uh, focused on was some of the background information about the consortium that Nebraska libraries belong to, some of the policies and financing. Uh, that uh, are associated with the consortium. We also talked about the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website, how to browse for and check out content, and we also reviewed account settings. Today, we're going to pick up where we left off uh, and talk about what you do after you've checked out titles. So basically, we're going to focus on how do you read those titles, how do you download them onto devices that you want to read them on? Uh, and that, of course, is one of the uh, troublesho troubleshooting challenges that we as librarians have uh, helping patrons with many different uh, scenarios in terms of the devices that they have and that they want to read on. So um, I do want to start out with a few PowerPoint slides, just like I did last time. There's some information that I want to review specifically before we get started. And then as we go along and we're actually uh, dealing with checked out material and downloading it, um, the information that we are reviewing to begin with is going to be repeated. So um, I'd say you're gonna get about at least three reps of some of this information today, which I think is important. So uh, what we're going to start out talking about is I do want to review file formats again. I know we talked about it last week, but it's important. And so I do want to start out today's session with a review. And I also want to review uh, the applications and software that you may have patrons uh, needing to use in order to use OverDrive. After that, we'll actually go on go live uh, at in a demo where we'll uh, look at the process of downloading uh, ebooks and audiobooks to various devices. And I do have a little webcam set up, and so I will um, broadcast um, a, a display of the devices and what we're doing on them. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Anytime I talk about file types, um, the first thing I like to do is mention DRM. Uh, DRM is Digital Rights Management, and it's a technology that controls or limits what you can do with a digital media file. So obviously, anytime a file contains content that is being sold, that's a commodity, uh, the producers, the publishers, the um, sellers want to protect that material so it doesn't then be Become something that can be shared freely with everyone in the world. And so that's why we do have, often have a DRM associated with our ebook and audiobook files, although not always and not as much as we used to. There are different flavors or brands of DRM. And that becomes important because depending on what type of DRM is, it, is attached to a particular file, that often controls which. Uh, pieces of software which devices can read that file or unlock that DRM. So we have uh, two types of content in our Nebraska Overdrive Libraries collection. We have ebooks and audiobooks. So first, I'd like to talk about the ebook file formats that you will run into in Overdrive. Um, probably the uh, most prevalent ebook file format that you'll see in OverDrive, um, the majority of ebook titles are available in this format, is EPUB. This is sort of an industry standard. One nice thing about this uh, file format is that it features reflowable text, and that means it adapts very well to different screen sizes. So you can read an EPUB file if you're reading it on a desktop computer. Uh, it will uh, look good on that large screen. If you're reading it on a smartphone, the text will uh, reflow and adapt, and it will look good on that small screen as well. Um, sort of my rule of thumb is when in doubt, if your patron doesn't have to have a Kindle format ebook, 
EPUB is probably the best uh, file format for them to choose if they have a choice among different formats. So EPUB is kind of the uh, fallback format to choose. EPUB uh, files can be protected with Adobe DRM and within OverDrive, those DRM protected EPUB files are simply referred to as EPUB files. EPUB files can also be DRM free and within OverDrive, those DRM free EPUB files are referred to as open EPUB and there are some books that are available in that open EPUB format. Probably the second most uh, popular file format or most in-demand file format within OverDrive is Kindle. This is for all of the many Kindle uh, users in our audience. Uh, Kindle files can be sent to a patron's Kindle device or a Kindle app via their Amazon account. Uh, Kindle files are protected by a proprietary Amazon DRM and just uh, as a point of uh, point of reference the uh, the uh, suffix or, or the um, those files always have uh, the .azw uh, file format associated with them. Um, because it's a very proprietary uh, DRM and file format that's why um, Kindle files can only be read on Kindle devices, and Kindle devices uh, will only read the uh, the the, um, the Kindle uh, files. So, people with uh, kin certain Kindle devices are really going to have to make sure that they uh, check out and download the Kindle format file. Another file format you'll see associated with eBooks and OverDrive is PDF. Um, PDF files feature a static layout with set page breaks, and this means that they are not as adaptable to a small screen size. Um, the types of material that work well uh, with a PDF file would be something like a graphic novel or a uh, title that has lots of illustrations where uh, you don't want to break up the, the image and the image and the pictures and the text. It needs to go together in a certain way. Um, but again, because of the uh, restrictions and the static layout of PDFs, um, they don't work well on small screens. In fact, um, the PDF format is not even supported by the OverDrive app, which is what people use to access uh, eBooks through OverDrive on tablets and on smartphones. So a PDF is kind of a limited restricted format that can't always, that's not as accessible. <clears throat> Just like EPUB files, PDF files can be protected with Adobe DRM and within the OverDrive interface, these are referred to simply as PDF files. They can also be DRM free and within the OverDrive interface, you'll find uh, these titles referred to as open PDF. The final ebook format I want to mention is something called OverDrive Read, which, uh, ov which OverDrive introduced a couple years ago. This format uh, is nice because you can read it immediately via a current web browser on your computer or, mo or mobile device. So Patrons don't have any additional software that they need to download in order to take advantage of this file format. They don't need to download the uh, title or activate software or authorize it or worry about anything like that. In addition to being able to read it in their browser uh, when they have internet access, they can also uh, actually save that OverDrive read file or bookmark it. Basically what they're doing it doing is they're saving it to their browser cache and it will be available to them for offline reading. So that's a nice option. Moving on to audiobook file formats, there are only two so it's easier to keep track of what your options are for audiobooks. Um, MP3 is the primary audiobook file type and this is a 
file format that I do not believe that there's any DRM attached to it at this point um, through OverDrive. Uh, MP3 files can be downloaded directly to smartphones, tablets, and Windows 8 and 10 computers using the OverDrive mobile app, and then they can be listened to directly from that app. These files can also be downloaded to Mac and Windows computers using a legacy OverDrive desktop software. Uh, when you do this, you can then listen to the audiobook on your computer. You can also transfer it to a standalone MP3 player, or in many instances, you can burn it to CDs if there's public publisher permission for that. There's also an OverDrive Listen browser-based uh, format for audiobooks, and this is similar to the OverDrive Read ebook format. It allows you to listen immediately via a current web browser on your computer or mobile device. Again, no additional software to download or activate. Um, the one difference between OverDrive Listen and OverDrive Read is that because it does rely on streaming technology, it's not a file that you can save for offline access. So you do always have to have internet access if you want to take advantage of that OverDrive Listen file. <clears throat> OK, so we've talked about file formats. Now we're going to talk about apps and software that your patrons um, may need to take advantage of. And I feel like it's kind of a chicken and an egg thing. When I talk about file formats, I inevitably mentioned software. Now that I'm talking about software, I'm also going to be mentioning file formats. So hopefully all this repetition is starting to uh, help you connect things in your mind. So. The OverDrive app is probably the primary way that um, people have been accessing OverDrive in the last couple of years. This app supports downloading EPUB ebooks and MP3 audiobooks both to tablets, smartphones, and Windows 8 and 10 computers. The OverDrive app is available uh, in different flavors or to run on different operating systems. So there's an OverDrive app uh, that uh, is designed for the iOS operating system that works on iPhones, iPads, and the iPad, iPod Touch. Uh, there's an OverDrive app for Android, Chromebook, Windows Phone, Windows 8 and 10, and for the Kindle Fire. The primary way that patrons will get access to the OverDrive app is by using whatever app store is associated with their device. And usually, if they've got a device that supports apps, hopefully they will know how to get access to the app store where they can purchase apps for their device. The OverDrive app will be available in their app store, and it will be a free download. There's also a page that's accessible through the Nebraska OverDrive Library's interface, and I'll show you how to get to this page. And it is sort of a, it's sort of a, it's a page that lists the different uh, versions of the app that are available and points you to the various uh, stores where you can get it. So that's kind of a, a helpful uh, site to be aware of for you as the librarian so that you can direct uh, patrons to where they need to go. Second type of software you may run into is Adobe Digital Editions. Uh, Adobe Digital Editions supports downloading EPUB and PDF eBooks to Windows or Mac computers. Once an eBook is downloaded to the computer through Adobe Digital Editions, you can read it on the computer through Adobe Digital Editions, or you can use it to transfer uh, the eBook to a standalone e-reader like the Nook Simple Touch. Um, this software is not developed by OverDrive, it's developed by Adobe, and it can be downloaded from the Adobe website. I've got the URL listed here, but again, you don't need to write it down. I'll show you where you can find a link to this page within the OverDrive interface. Finally, there's OverDrive desktop software for Windows and Mac. Those of you who have been part of the consortium uh, since the beginning will remember that this used to be called the OverDrive Media Console. Um, this software supports data downloading MP3 audiobooks to Windows or Mac computers. It not only lets you listen 
on the computer. It also lets you transfer that MP3 player to that MP3 file to a little standalone MP3 player that doesn't have any kind of internet access. It also lets you uh, burn uh, burn to CD uh, if the publisher permits. That again is available to download from this um, OverDrive app page and I'll show you how to get there from the interface. So just to list ahead of time what types of devices and what reading options we're going to demo today. We're going to look at the OverDrive Read and Listen browser options. We're going to look at an iPad and how to uh, get the OverDrive app on the iPad and download books, uh, audiobooks and ebooks to the iPad. We're going to look at a Kindle Paperwhite, a Kindle Fire. We're going to look at the Windows 8 and 10 OverDrive app which is on my desktop computer. And we're also going to look at how to get ebooks on a standalone e-reader like the Nook Simple Touch and how to get an audiobook on a standalone uh, MP3 player, in this case, the Sansa Clip. So that's kind of our overview, overview for the day. I'm done with the uh, PowerPoint slides, so let's go ahead and go straight to the Nebraska OverDrive Libraries interface. Okay, like I said, I want to show you how you can um, how you can get to information about the different apps and software that your patron may need to use OverDrive. So the easiest way to do that from within the OverDrive interface is to click on this help icon, which should be in the upper right corner of every page. So I'm going to click on help. And you'll see the second link here says applications. So I'm going to click on applications. Up at the top of the page, it talks about the OverDrive Read and OverDrive Listen options. If you'll remember, there's no software to download for those. If you click on the OverDrive Read link or the OverDrive Listen link, it just takes, takes you to a help file about that format and it will give you browser specifications. For instance, if your patron's not sure if their browser is uh, a current enough to support that format, it talks about how to save uh, ebook uh, text for offline access, etc. So there's information about the OverDrive Read and OverDrive Listen options here. There's a link to where you can download that Adobe Digital Edition software if your patron needs that, so I'm going to click on that. It takes me to the Adobe Digital Editions page. If you look up here in the upper right, you've got the download option, so I'm going to click on download. And there's uh, a version for Macintosh and a version for Windows. Uh, I do want to make a comment here. Um, I have, uh, not that long ago, I had, um, I asked the computer staff uh, at the Library Commission to, to update my Adobe Digital Editions to the latest edition, this 4.5.2. And what I found out earlier this week when I was trying to download uh, books from OverDrive to that software, uh, there's some sort of bug that uh, downloads multiple copies of the book. So I ended up uh, having uh, asking the computer staff to uninstall the newest version and go back and uh, install the older version. So I have backed up to uh, version 3.0, which is available for here. So I thought I'd just mention that. Um, and version 3.0 has been working fine for me this week. So just a little tip there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go back to that um, applications page on the OverDrive website. And this OverDrive link is where you will uh, get all the information about the different versions of the OverDrive app. Now, I find this page a little bit frustrating because when I click on it, I expect to see information about the apps right away. And instead, if you scroll down this page, uh, I'd say three-fourths of the page is kind of promotional material about the app. There's not even anything to click on. It's just information. So you can either scroll all the way to the bottom, or if you click on Get Started, it actually jumps you down to the bottom of the page where it's got the specific information about the app that you might be looking for. 
So again, you've got these uh, little icons that uh, direct you to the app stores where you can get the device, where you can get the software. Obviously, the patron's going to want to do this on their particular device, um, but at least this gives you sort of a reminder as a librarian where they'd go. So you can look at this page and say, okay, there's a version of the OverDrive app for um, if you've got a you know, a device that uh, is running Android, you can get it through Google Play. If, if uh, you've got a Kindle uh, Fire, you can get it from Amazon. Um, this available for Mac here, this is actually the OverDrive uh, sort of desktop legacy software for Mac, that old OverDrive media console. And if you click on it, it will actually bring up a window that starts the download process. So in this particular case, you're not being directed to another website. You're actually able to download the software directly from that icon. The same thing goes for the Windows desktop uh, software for, for um, the, the legacy software that lets you uh, download MP3s to uh, older versions of Windows. So again, you can get the software directly there. So anyway, um, keep this page in mind um, so that you can help direct your patrons to software if they're having, like I said, hopefully they'll uh, know how to access the App Store for their device and that's the easiest way to get it and we'll actually look at that when we're on the iPad. Um, but this is a place where you can be reminded of which versions of the software are available. At this point, I want to go ahead and go to the uh, checkouts page for this account. I'm already signed in, so I'm going to click on checkout on account, and what I get is a checkouts page. And you can see I already have uh, six items checked out, and I want to go ahead and look at the information on this page. You'll notice that under most of the titles that I have checked out, there's a return button. When you initially check out a book, you can return it from the checkout page. That return title button will stay available until you select a file format and actually download the book to a device. Once you've downloaded the book, you'll no longer be able to return it from your checkouts page. You'll have to return it from the software that you downloaded the book to. We'll talk about that once we get to looking at the app. But I just want to point out right here, you'll notice Rocket Boys. This book here, there's no return title button here. And that tells you that I've already downloaded this, and so I'm going to have to go to the software I downloaded it to in order to return it. The other um, information that I want to point out to you, and this is important sometimes if you're troubleshooting for a patron, is um, being able to see what formats are available to choose for download and figuring out which format your patron actually chose. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice here um, for audiobooks, there are only two options, two file formats available. There's the MP3 audiobook file format and the OverDrive Listen. Um, the browser-based options, listen and read, are always going to be listed separately. So those options, those two options, if they're available for a title, will always remain available and you can access them from your checkouts page. Um, in other cases, when there are more than one format to choose from, you're, the first thing your patron's going to be asked to do before downloading is to specify which format they want to download. So. If you click on the little drop down arrow, you'll see Tricky 22 is available in both Kindle book format and EPUB ebook file format. Once your patron selects a file format and begins the download process, they are only going to be able to access that format during the checkout period. The reason this is sometimes important is that if a patron selects and tries to download a format that won't work on their device, um, they're kind of out of luck during the checkout period unless um, you're – one of the things we're going to be talking about in two weeks when we talk about Marketplace, you can get into the Marketplace admin module and you can forcibly return a title for your patron. 
So it's possible for you ret to return the book and then let them check it out again and select the correct format as long as there aren't holes on the title. But again, um, the goal is to have patrons select a format that they can actually use. Otherwise, it's going to really cause some problems for them. Um, you'll notice in the case of Rocket Boys, that's the title that was already downloaded. I have no return title uh, button available underneath it. You'll see that it tells me what file format I selected. So I've selected that PDF ebook format. If you want to see what other options were, were available to me, I can click on the book cover and go back to the detailed record for that book. And you'll see I could have chosen Kindle format. Overdrive read format, EPUB ebook format, or PDF ebook. So I selected the PDF. So right at this point now, only PDF and that Overdrive read format are available to me. Um, any questions about that? Okay, then we are going to actually start talking about apps, devices, and downloading. And I'm going to try to bring up my camera and I've got an iPod here and we're going to try to make this as big as we can. Okay, um, so this is how many of your patrons will uh, approach OverDrive uh, completely through their uh, device if they've got a tablet or uh, uh, a smartphone. So this is an iPad, and you'll notice right here, this is the App Store for the iPad. I do have the OverDrive app on this device, uh, and I am going to actually um, uninstall it so that you can see the process. Uh, we're going to go through the process of searching for it and installing it. So to uninstall an app on the iPad, I'm going to press and hold on the icon. I get a little X. I click on the X and it's going to prompt me and ask if I really want to delete it. So I'm going to say delete and it's gone. So if your patron knows nothing about OverDrive, they're just getting started and they've got an iPod, iPad, um, you would have them go to the App Store. They are going to search for OverDrive, so I'm tapping in the search box and then typing in OverDrive. You can see OverDrive up in the left corner. And in this case, there's a little um, cloud with a download arrow, if you can see that. Uh, instead of the get icon that you see associated with other apps. That's basically because I've already um, quote unquote gotten this app or purchased it, albeit at no cost. So it's uh, been uninstalled, but uh, all I need to do is download it again. So I'm going to click on um, the little cloud and download the app again. Now it says open, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
go back to my screen and you'll see now I've got the OverDrive app icon again on my screen. So I'm going to open it. And this is what your patrons will see when they download the app. And I do want to uh, walk through the screen somewhat carefully because I think it is confusing for people. They are going to be prompted. It's going to, this is one of those cases where reading the screen carefully is important. It says sign up for an OverDrive account to enjoy ebooks, audiobooks, movies, and much more from your library. Well, we don't buy movies, but ebooks and audiobooks. So you can either sign up for an OverDrive app or it says already have an account, sign in. Um, the OverDrive account is different than the um, account that patrons use to sign into the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website. The, um, the, the login for the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website that they use is something they get from you. It usually consists of a library card number and a PIN or password of some sort. That gets them into the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website where they can access the collection. The OverDrive account is something different, and it's something that they need to create if they don't have one. And it's important that if, they, um, if they've already created an account, if they've already downloaded the OverDrive app on another device, they will have created an account at that time, and they will have associated that uh, app with that account. They're going to want to sign in to this version of the OverDrive app with the same OverDrive account. The reason that's important is that if you want to be able to uh, access a book during the checkout period on more than one device, each of those devices has to be authorized with the same account. That's how uh, OverDrive ties the checked out title to you as a particular individual during that checkout period. So again, this is a little bit tricky, and if they forget that they have an, another OverDrive account and they sign up for a new one and authorize this uh, version of the app with a different account, then there's going to be a problem if they try to uh, download the same book on their two different devices. Um, for instance, I've got an iPhone and I've got a Kindle Fire. So I've got a version of the OverDrive app on each of those devices. Because I've uh, authorized both devices with the same OverDrive account, then I can have that book on both devices um, at the same time. And so that's important because I don't carry my Kindle Fire with me everywhere. That's my preferred reading platform, but if I'm uh, stuck in line someplace or in a waiting room someplace, it's nice to be able to get that book on my phone as well. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in because I already have created an over, I already have an account. So again, this page can be confusing because the first options you see are sign in using a library card, which that option isn't actually supported by our consortium yet or sign in using Facebook. But again, what your patrons are going to want to do is probably sign in with an OverDrive account if they already have one. So let me go ahead and do that quickly. Okay, so now that I have signed in, it lets me get into the app. And the first thing you see is uh, basically your bookshelf. And I have no books listed on the bookshelf at this point. Um, so at this point, what your patrons need to do is they need to click on the menu icon in the upper left-hand corner, the three little lines. And I'm not sure if you see that.
Okay, and uh, here you'll see actually already three libraries saved. The reason you're seeing those is because um, in I've lo I've uh, actually used this. Uh, these libraries are saved to my OverDrive account. So when I log into a new version of the app with that same OverDrive account, it already remembers the libraries that uh, I um, am interested in. If this is a brand new installation and your patron just created a brand new OverDrive account, there are going to be no libraries listed here. So what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to do add library. They can search by zip code or by their town name. So, for instance, if I were in North Platte, which I use as my example because I know that zip code, I could type in 69101. It says North Platte Public Library. I click on that. It tells me that this library uses the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries collection. And when I select that, it does two things. It takes me to the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries website from within the app. And I've still got this little app menu option up in the upper left-hand corner. It also will save the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries library site to this list of libraries. So that's probably the first thing your patrons will want to do. Okay, so I need to sign into my account here. I just clicked on account and it's going to prompt me to sign in. And I have an account set up. I have a library card uh, that's associated with the Shadron Public Library, so let me get in there quickly. And this should look familiar to you. This is the same uh, checkout page we were looking at earlier. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to check out an ebook and check out an audiobook. Actually, before I do that, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to finish talking about the iPad. And then I forgot to show you the read and listen options on the computer. So we'll switch back to that. So while we're in the iPad, um, in the app, I'm going to select, I have to select a format that I want to download for the Tricky 22. So I'm going to click on that little drop down arrow. I'm going to check the EPUB checkbox. After doing that, I get a little confirm and add to app link. So I'm going to click on that. And I get a message telling me that the title is being added. While I'm on this page, I will also check out the other uh, audiobook to the left. There's only uh, two options available, the listen in your browser option and the MP3 option. So I'm going to click add to app for the MP3 option. And the one thing to notice about audiobook files is they are multi-part files. And so if you can see up on the corner of the uh, left-hand corner of the screen, there's a little number nine. So it tells me there are nine files that have to be downloaded. And so that's going to take a little bit of time. So what I want to do now is I'm downloading these books to the bookshelf in my app. So I'm going to open the app menu again and go to the bookshelf. And now this was the blank bookshelf that we saw when we first uh, opened the app. Now there are two books on it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open Tricky22 because I know that that downloads pretty quickly. I just tap on the book cover. Um, I'm going to say yes, continue. Um, and it was just, again, because of that, I've, I, I was looking at this book earlier, and so it is remembering that I was further along in that book um, when I was looking at it earlier, and so it was going to take me to that position. So then I can just page through the book um, page by page. When I get want to get back to the uh, bookshelf of the app, I just tap in the center of the book page to bring up the app menu again, and I can click on that app menu. 
and I can go back to my bookshelf. If you can notice too that little red air, red circle, it says five now, so that shows you that um, how many parts of that uh, audiobook uh, have been downloaded. And I do want to take you to the page where you can monitor the download of audiobook parts over here on the menu you'll see there's a files option and the little five if, is next to that. Um, if you go to that page, you'll see this audiobook title listed. It says five of nine downloaded. If you click on it, you can actually see all the different parts listed and you can see which ones are downloaded. This last one, part six, it says waiting, so that's still in process. Um, part 7 is downloaded, part 8 is downloading. So you can kind of monitor the progress. Sometimes this is useful if your patron had a problem uh, downloading uh, the audiobook. You can check here to see which parts downloaded and which didn't. So even though it's not all the way downloaded, I think since the first parts are downloaded, I can go ahead and tap on it. And I don't know if you can hear this, but it's actually playing now. So, so this is how people can download an audiobook to the Overdrive app and just listen to it directly from the app. So I'm going to stop it. Again, I can click on the uh, menu for the uh, Overdrive app and then go back to my bookshelf. So we talked about how as soon as you download uh, ebook or audiobook from the checkout page within your Nebraska Overdrive Libraries account. The return button goes away on that checkouts page and you then have to return it through the uh, app. So in order to do that, um, all you would do is you'd press and hold on the book cover and you'll see now I have the option of returning the audio, the ebook if I want, which I'm not going to do at the moment, or if I press and hold, I could return the audiobook. So that's how you uh, would return these titles after you've downloaded them. The one other thing I want to show you here, I'm going to click on the menu again, and you'll see uh, under settings, I'm going to go to settings, and under ebook, it says Adobe ID, but if you tap on that, it will tell you. Uh, how this OverDrive account is authorized. And it says, this device is authorized with the OverDrive account, susan.nisley.nebraska.gov, which of course is the account that I signed in with when we first opened this app. So um, again, sometimes when you're helping a patron and they're having problems getting a book downloaded to multiple devices that they own, coming in here and looking to see what account they have the uh, app authorized with is important. So that is, um, the OverDrive app. I'm now going to momentarily switch back to my desktop. And I want to show you uh, the uh, OverDrive read in, in your browser and listen in your browser options, um, which I neglected to show you before. So um, your patrons can always come back here to their uh, checkouts page and choose one of these options. What's going to happen when I click on read? is I'm going to open up another tab on my computer and that book text is going to appear in that tab. So there is my book and again uh, just using my mouse, I can click on the right side of the screen and page through the book. Read it online. Once again, if I tap my click my mouse in the center of the screen, I bring up menu and navigation options. I have a search option. I can adjust the font. I can bookmark certain pages. If I open the menu, I get a table of contents, the chapters that I can display, but I also want to point out this offline access option. If you know that you're going to be, for instance, in a car or something and you're not going to have internet access, but you still want to read the book, um, if you click on offline access, 
it takes you to a page and you, it says download all pages for offline reading. Then it also tells you to return to this book easily. Consider adding it to your browser's bookmarks. Learn more about downloading for offline reading with Overdrive Read. So there's a link you can click on for help information. But basically, when you click on this little cloud and download the text of the book, what you're basically doing it is you're saving it to your browser's cache. So um, I'm going to go ahead. That's going to take a little bit to save. But while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and open up yet another tab on my computer and I'll show you some other books that I've saved for offline reading. So on Firefox, this is how I open my bookmarks. And you'll see under recently bookmarked, I have two titles, Hillbilly Elegy and Manhood for Amateurs. These are actually books that I checked out, uh, one from Lincoln City Libraries and one from um, Omaha Public Library. So they are not even um, from the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries collection, but I opened the Overdrive Read version of the book, and then I saved it and bookmarked it for offline access. So I can click on one of those titles, and you'll see the text of that book now is available to me. I'm going to close that tab. And you'll see now I get a message that um, this um, Tricky 22 has been downloaded for offline reading. If I want to be able to easily get back to it, I'd come up here and I'd click on the star in order to bookmark it. So there we go. I've bookmarked it. Now if I want to get back to it, you'll see it shows up in my bookmark page as well. So that's the um, Overdrive Read option. The listen option is just as easy to use. You click on the button and it opens a new tab. And you've got the play, uh, play button that you can click. And Blackstone Audio presents I, on the again, I don't know if you can hear that, but it is playing. Um, as I said, the only difference is there's no way to save this for offline reading. So um, that you do have to be connected to the Internet one way or another to take advantage of. OK, sorry, I forgot. That was the first reading option I wanted to show you and listening option. And I forgot and jumped to the iPad. So anyway, now we're back on track. Um, now that we have talked about uh, the iPad, I want to move on and talk about Kindles. So again, I'm going to switch back to my camera view and take away the iPod and grab a Kindle Paperwhite. OK, there we go. Um, there are actually two types of Kindles. There are e-readers, like the Paperwhite, and there's the Kindle Fire tablet. And they're actually pretty different from each other. So if someone talks about having problems with uh, their Kindle, Really, the first question you have to ask them is, what kind of Kindle do you have? And it doesn't have to be, they don't have to give you the model number or anything like that. But what you really need to know is, is it a Kindle e-reader or is it a tablet? Um, e-readers are going to be uh, black and white display. And they are designed primarily as uh, e-book readers. About all you can do on a Kindle e-reader is read books. Now, they're optimized to purchase books from the Amazon uh, Kindle bookstore. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little shopping cart right up here. Uh, and that's how you would shop the Amazon Kindle bookstore for books to purchase. Uh, this Kindle Paperwhite does have wireless access. 
So it does let the person search the Amazon bookstore and wirelessly deliver titles to their Kindle e-reader. Um, but the question is, how do you get a Nebraska Overdrive uh, ebook on this device? Um, there is an experimental browser uh, on this particular uh, Kindle e-reader and on other Kindle e-readers, but these browsers really are not robust enough to uh, support you getting a book from the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website. It used to be that um, it was absolutely impossible. You would go to the browser, you'd go to the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website, and you'd start the process of searching for and checking out a book, and at some point, it just wouldn't work. You couldn't go any further. I actually did successfully go through the whole process on this experimental browser yesterday, but it was very painful, and so that's really not the ideal way to get a book on your Kindle e-reader. You really need access to either a, a computer with a fully functioning web browser or a smartphone with a fully functioning web browser. So. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to switch back to the um, my computer. And what we're going to do is go through the process that you need to go through in order to get a book on your uh, Kindle e-reader. So I'm going to go down here, and I have Outlander. I haven't selected a format yet. So I'm going to open this format selection box, and I'm going to check Kindle Book because I have to. The only format of ebook that my Kindle e-reader will read is Kindle. Now I'm going to say Confirm and Get Kindle Book. And what's going to happen is I am now going to be redirected to the Amazon website. Um, in this particular case, because I've uh, used been to the Amazon website on this computer before. It actually logs me in to a Nebraska Library Commission account. It says, hello, Nebraska, so I don't have to log in again. What it tells me is, um, get your digital library loan. It tells me what the expiration date will be. It actually gives me a return option at this point, so if I um, didn't actually want this book, I could return it from here. Then look over on the right, it says, you are signed in as nlc.social at nebraska.gov. There's a button that says get library book, and there's a little window that says deliver to, and in this little drop down, it says Kindle Paperwhite. So as soon as I click this get library book, it's going to have in its mind that I want that book sent to my Kindle Paperwhite. One thing that often happens is patrons don't really carefully look at this. They just click Get Library Book, and then they will, um, you know, sometimes they might have more than one Kindle device that they have associated with their account, and so they're looking for the book to show up on one Kindle, and it actually got sent to another. So if patrons are questioning why a book doesn't show up on their Kindle and they think it should, this is one place to come check and make sure they actually delivered it to the right device. If you open this drop-down menu here, you'll see the Library Commission also has associated with this Amazon account a Kindle 3, which is a very old version of the Kindle e-reader. We've got a Kindle iPad app. We've got um, a Kindle app on the Windows 8 computer. We've got a Kindle Fire and several other versions of the Kindle app for Windows 8. So you want to make sure that the right device is selected here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Get Library Book. <clears throat> and now this is another screen that often confuses, confuses people because what do you see? You see this big yellow button that says Download Now, and so people think they need to download it. They actually don't. If you read the text, what it says is your digital library book will be delivered to Kindle Paperwhite. Your Kindle will download Outlander the next time it connects to Wi-Fi. So your ebook has already been delivered to your device. This download now option would actually download the Kindle format ebook file to your computer. Um, and so that would be an option if you are going to 
you know, transfer it via USB or something, but you shouldn't need to do that. Now at this point, um, sometimes uh, if you're helping a patron with this process, uh, sometimes they'll be frustrated, they'll have their e-reader with them and they won't see it show up on their device. Uh, that may be because they've never connected to the library Wi-Fi network and if they're not connected to Wi-Fi, it's not going to show up on their device. So they have two options. They can either connect to the library Wi-Fi and see uh, if the book then appears or what often happens is the patron goes home and as soon as they walk in their door, their Kindle e-reader connects to their Wi-Fi at home and the book appears. So you'll see right here um, on my Kindle e-book reader now, this Outlander's book has appeared and I can open it up and start reading it. So uh, a very easy, seamless process. Uh, let me get back to the home screen here. So how do you how do you go about then getting this book checked back in? You actually can't check it. You cannot check it in from the actual e-reader itself. You have to check it in from within your Amazon account. So again, I'm going to switch back the screen to Amazon. And there's a uh, couple of ways you can get to the right page to check in books. You'll see if you would like to manage your digital title, go to manage your content and devices. Um, if people uh, just contact you out of the, you know, after the fact, after they've already been reading the book for a while, um, the way I direct them to this manage your content and devices uh, page within their account is I tell them to go and look for where it says, hello, Nebraska, your account. When you open up this drop-down menu, uh, Manager Content and Devices is one of the links on this drop-down menu. So it's going to prompt me to sign in again. And now I get to a page and it's going to list all the content that I have uh, either purchased or checked out for my uh, Kindle. So this is Outlanders. This is the item I just borrowed. You can see a couple other items where the loan has already expired. And then you'll also see I have a title called Remembrance that's been borrowed. So I'm actually going to show you how to check in Remembrance if you're done with it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this little Actions button. And one of the options here is return this book. So that is how I return it to OverDrive. Now what I want to show you on Outlander, we talked about how sometimes people accidentally send their uh, Kindle book that they're checking out to the wrong Kindle device because they're not looking at what device is selected in that little drop down window. Um, there's a way around that. You can actually send it to more than one Kindle device during the checkout period. So if you didn't send it to the right device or if you want to send it to another device as well, again, you can come up to the, the Actions button. So we know that Outlanders already appears on our Kindle Paperwhite, but I'm also going to go ahead and send it to the Kindle Fire that we're going to look at next. So you can say deliver to default device. So the Kindle Paperwhite is my default device. That's where it just automatically went to. But I can also say deliver to others. Now I have that list of other either versions of that Kindle app or Kindle devices. So I'm going to select Nebraska's Kindle Fire and say deliver. And now when we um, start looking at the Kindle Fire, we should find the Outlanders book has already been delivered to that device. Um, switching back to the Kindle Paperwhite just momentarily, you'll see um, the book that I just uh, returned, Remembrance, now that shows up and it says Loan Ended, so that's a book I've checked in. Okay, so that is the Kindle Paperwhite. And just a second, I looks like there are a couple questions that have come in, so let me see what that, what they have asked.
When you download books to read offline, do you have it forever or does it return when your checkout is, is done? Um, when you download the book to read offline, um, it will you'll no longer be able to access it after the checkout period is over. Um, the system that they've built is smart enough to know when that checkout period is over and it you'll get an expired message if you try to access it after the fact. Um, the question about the ODM error um, when attempting to transfer an audiobook to an MP3 player on a PC with Windows 8.1, um, I'm going to have to research that one off the top of my head. I don't know what that error means, but that's something that I can try to follow up with uh, later. Um, so those are the two questions that I have now. So let me go ahead then and we're going to go talk about the Kindle Fire. So away goes the Kindle Paperwhite, and here comes the Kindle Fire. And um, the Kindle Fire is uh, going to work very similar to the iPad. It is a tablet, so it's designed to let you download apps onto the device. Um, you'll see right up here, uh, there is the App Store that you can access, and that's where you would go if you don't already have the OverDrive app on your device to search for it and download it. Um, so uh, the nice thing about the Kindle Fire is that uh, you have lots of different options. Because it's a Kindle device, it's designed to make it really easy to get books from Amazon. Um, and you will see already that our book, our Kindle copy of Outlander, we sent to the Kindle Fire. It already shows up here on our carousel on our home screen, so I could open that and read it. But because you can also uh, download the app, that means you can also get EPUB ebooks and MP3 audiobooks on this device. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and open the app, which I've already set up. And I'll just point out to you, we talked about how apps need to be authorized with the same uh, OverDrive account. So I'm going to go down here and go to Settings. And you'll see uh, the information appears in a slightly different place in this version of the app because this is the Android version of the app instead of the iOS version of the app. But it does say this app is authorized with the OverDrive account, susan.nisley at nebraska.gov. So it's authorized the same way. In this particular case, you can see I already have Nebraska Overdrive Libraries uh, saved as one of my libraries. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the website. I'm going to go to my checkouts page. And it saved my library card number and PIN. So again, I have access to the same items here. One thing I want to show you, if you'll remember, I said that um, the PDF format is not supported by the OverDrive app. If you come down here and look at that one um, PDF uh, book that I had already uh, selected that format, you'll say it says disabled PDF ebook. If I try to download it, I'm guessing I'll get an error message or just nothing happens. This is a case where that OverDrive re it read in your browser option is very nice um, because uh, I accidentally sel selected that PDF format. I can't get that on my app, but because the uh, Kindle Fire has a fully functioning um, web browser, I can open up the read version and read it that way. So that is uh, a nice uh, workaround if someone accidentally selects the wrong format. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and download that Tricky 22 again, which I've already selected the EPUB format. And I can also uh, download an audio book to the app. 
And again, that's going to take a while since there are multiple files. But if I go back and click on the menu, you can see I've got 14 files in this audiobook, and so it's going to take a while to download. But if I go back to the bookshelf, um, you can see both books are there. Again, if I wanted to return it, I'd press and hold, and I have the return option. And you'll see that I get a message saying that the uh, audiobook is still in the process of downloading. So it's telling me uh, that it's not ready to read yet or to listen to. So that's the Kindle Fire. Uh, I now want to go ahead and uh, talk about the uh, OverDrive app for Windows 8 and 10. Um, this is uh, an app that you can get on a desk, desktop or laptop computer if you've got Windows 8 or 10 on your uh, computer. There are also tablets out there that run Windows 8 and 10. And so the app is actually designed with the idea that uh, you may have access to a touch screen. So it's going to look a little bit different than other versions of the OverDrive app. Um, I actually don't have access to the uh, Windows or Microsoft Store on my computer just because um, it's a state computer and we've been blocked from access to the store. <clears throat> but um, the computer staff was able to get the app for me. So you'll see over here I've got two versions of OverDrive on here. This is the OverDrive app for Windows 8 and 10. And this is that OverDrive for Windows desktop software. So I've got two. Uh, both uh, types of software on this device. I'm going to open up the app. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's the same type of information that you are used to from uh, the uh, mobile apps for the um, iPad and the Kindle Fire. It just appears in a little different order. So again, you have the option to add a library. You can search for the library by zip code or name. Um, I've already got uh, some libraries saved, so again, I can go uh, to the Nebraska Overdrive Library site. Again, go to my checkouts page, sign in. I've got my books, so again, um, I can download them. Whoops, there we go. It says Tricky 22 has been added. I can go to my bookshelf or I can keep browsing. I'm going to stay on this page just a second and work on downloading the MP3. Um, again, it says I can keep browsing or go to my bookshelf. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my bookshelf. So I'm back to this main screen. And you'll see I have both my books here. Um, again, I can click on the book, open it up, and read it. Um, because all of my apps are authorized with the same OverDrive account, it tries to sync my progress between uh, the different versions of the app. And so it says, do you want to go to where you left off uh, on another device? So I can say yes. And it jumps me to that page. Um, again, click in the center. And you bring up your different options for um, navigating, for changing the font styles. Uh, you have the content, table of contents button up here, bookmarks, etc. cetera. Um, or you can uh, click on the back arrow to go back into the um, app bookshelf. Uh, I don't know if this is downloaded enough. So again, you can listen to it straight through, straight from the computer. Um, one thing I want to show you here now is I want to show you an example of what happens if you uh, try to download a book to a version of the app when it's already been downloaded um, on another app that's not authorized with the same ID. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Omaha Public Library quickly. And now this is a title that I checked out with my Omaha library card, and I downloaded it to my own uh, device that's authorized with a different 
overdrive account than the one we've been using to authorize the apps we looked at today. So if I would try to down, and I've already downloaded um, my book to my Kindle Fire at home and my um, iPhone. If I try to download this now, I get a message that says this title has been downloaded using a different account. Authorize this app with the same OverDrive account you originally used to download the title. So I would have to change the uh, OverDrive account that I'd used uh, for this version of the app, which I don't want to do. So that's just something to be aware of. If you want to see which uh, account has been used to authorize this version of the app, you'd open the menu. They have an authorization uh, menu option. And it tells you this app is authorized with your OverDrive account associated with susan.nisley at nebraska.gov. So again, um, that's where you find that information. So this is the uh, OverDrive app for Windows 8 and 10. It lets you uh, listen or read directly from the computer. So the one option we haven't talked about yet um, is what happens if you have uh, you don't have a tablet or smartphone and your computer isn't running Windows 8 or 10 or what happens if you have a Mac what happens if you want to read your ebook on a standalone e-reader like the Nook or uh, stand you want to get your audiobook on an mp3 player and that's when you use some of that desktop desktop software we talked about earlier so again I'm gonna switch gears here and I'm going to go ahead and switch to the uh, camera view, but I'm also going to minimize it so you can see a couple things at once here. Um, the Nook Simple Touch is a standalone e-reader, um, just like the Kindle e-reader. Um, it does have uh, web access uh, enough to support purchasing uh, books. Uh, from the Barnes & Noble Nook store, but it doesn't have any kind of web browser, th so there's no way to get access to um, ebook content um, from the Nebraska Overdrive site through this uh, interface. It's also not possible to deliver content wirelessly to this device, so we're going to have to actually download a file to the computer and then connect the Nook with a USB cable and transfer it over. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, I'm just in my browser and I am going to go ahead and here's finally this PDF that we haven't been able to access so far. So I'm going to go ahead and I can download the PDF to the OverDrive Digital Edition software, which is already downloaded on my computer. So I click on download. It asks me if I want to open this file with Adobe Digital Editions and I say OK. The Adobe Digital Edition software opens automatically, the book's downloaded, and then it's opened up in reading view to the first page. So again, I can read online through the software. I can come up here where it says library and go back to the library view. You'll see my book shows up here. And um, at this point, uh, the Adobe Digital Edition software does have to be, again, um, authorized uh, with uh, either an Adobe ID or, in this case, if you're using it in conjunction with OverDrive, you can authorize it with an OverDrive account. Um, I, I can't remember if you are prompted to authorize the software when you first install it or if you're prompted to authorize it the first time you download a DRM protected file. But in any event, um, when you are authorizing it, you will have a little uh, an option that asks you what uh, credential you want to uh, authorize it with and you'll have a drop down menu and you can scroll through lots of options. One of them is OverDrive. And so if you select OverDrive, you can then type in your OverDrive uh, account, uh, username, and password, and it'll be authorized that way. If I click on Authorize Information, again, here you can see this computer can read Adobe DRM protected content authorized to the following accounts. Again, it's at susan.nisley at nebraska.gov, and it says OverDrive.
So I could, for instance, that same um, Janet Ivanovich book that we've downloaded to our app, I could also download it to this device. So how do I get it on my Nook? I actually have to plug my Nook in via USB. So I'm taking my cable uh, and I've already connected it to a USB on my computer and then I'm connecting it to the Nook and watch in the OverDrive software up here in the upper left column, you should see the Nook appear shortly. Whoops, I gotta plug the other end in too. Here we go. There we go, now you see the Nook up here. What I can do at this point then is if I right click on this book that I wanna transfer, one of my options is return borrowed item, but one of the options is copy to computer or device and one of my devices is the Nook. So I clicked on that and it should now be transferred to my Nook. There are two ways I can check that. If I click on the Nook, I can see the books that are on the Nook. Um, and here's a book that I transferred yesterday when I was playing around. And if I actually want to remove that, I can uh, right click on it. And one of my options is return borrowed item. Oop, it looks like I already returned that. So all I need to do is delete it, remove from library. So that's how you actually remove a book from the Nook device. So what I want to do now is bring up my picture again, unplug the Nook, and I'm going to click on the Nook menu button down here at the bottom, click on the library option to look at a list of all the books on the device, and you'll see now that Rocket Boys has been added to the device and I can open it up and read it. So that is how you get a book uh, downloaded to the computer and transferred to the standalone um, e-reader using um, the Adobe Digital Edition software. Uh, the final thing we want to talk about is how to get an audiobook onto a little MP3 player like the Sansa Clip. And so again, I'm going to go ahead and close Adobe Digital Editions and go back here to my screen. And what we want to do is uh, download the MP3 to the computer. And remember, I already have that OverDrive for Windows desktop uh, legacy software downloaded on this computer. So <clears throat> when I click on download, it asks if I want to open it with that OverDrive for Windows software and so I say okay. It asks what file I want to save it to and so what folder and so I'm just going to save it to the default folder. It shows me all the parts, asks if I want to download all the parts. I say okay. And it's going to work on downloading them. And I should have just downloaded a couple parts. I didn't think about that in terms of time, but it's going pretty fast. While we're waiting, I will show you. Um, you'll notice that the uh, return button has disappeared from many of these other uh, let me just go ahead and refresh this. The return button has disappeared from all of the titles that I've downloaded to the various versions of the app, etc. Okay, so my uh, book is finished downloading, my audio book. If I double click on it, you can actually listen to it from the software. I can hear it reading now or you have the option to transfer or burn. So I want to transfer it to my little MP3 player. 
So I'm going to click on transfer. And it says the wizard will guide you through the steps needed to transfer. Please connect your device and select next to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got a little USB connected to my device. So I'm going to again connect it to my computer USB. And it's turning on. It's connected. So I'm going to go back here and click on next on my uh, wizard. Ugh. Okay, let's try transfer. Okay, that's never happened before. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and unconnect it and connect it again and see if something's going on there because this worked yesterday. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on, but um, I don't have time to troubleshoot it now, but it should, um, it should transfer. And let me just go ahead and show you a couple other audiobooks that I've downloaded onto this device so you can see. And the one nice thing about, um, somebody asked about downloading ebooks for offline access if they uh, remained accessible after the checkout period and the answer was no. But um, for audiobooks, um, here's uh, the Cuckoo's Calling, which is one that I downloaded in the past. Um, so it's uh, 15 parts are downloaded and it's uh, still on here even though I downloaded it probably over a year ago. So the MP3 audiobooks um, if you download them on the app, the app keeps track of the checkout period. But if you download them and uh, transfer them to one of these standalone MP3 players that doesn't have internet access, the uh, files do stay on there um, for a longer period of time. Um, the other thing that I want to point out uh, in the uh, OverDrive uh, legacy desktop software is you also have that burn option. So if uh, the publishers gave permission, you can actually burn uh, a copy of this book to CD if, for instance, you have a, a car radio, a car um, system that uses CDs. It will tell you, uh, usually at some point, it will tell you how many uh, CDs you need. You usually need one CD per part. So it'll prompt you to put a CD in uh, the drive and then click Next, and it'll prompt you to uh, remove and add new CDs. So that's how you can actually get um, an audiobook burn to a CD. Um, that is the end of what I wanted to cover today. I'm sorry we went long, though I'm not surprised. Um, I'm going to check and see if we've got any other questions. Um, and it doesn't look like we have any that have come in. Um, the, uh, there was the question about the specific error message, which I'll try to get back to you on. Otherwise, does anybody have any questions about what we talked about today, the different options? Um, if not, the last thing I want to mention is, again, if you uh, signed in after I got started, I didn't get a chance to mention this. But if you do have addition, I'll be able to see your name if you're the one that signed in to go to webinar, but if you have additional people attending with you and they want to be uh, listed for continuing education credit, please uh, type their name into the question box and send it to me um, so that I can be sure to um, get their names. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope this was helpful. It has been recorded, and so once I get the recording uploaded, I'll send out a message to the Nebraska Overdrive Library's mailing list letting people know where that recording is in case um, other staff members want to watch. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording, and um, 
I think that's all for today. Thanks for attending.